By far the most common question I get on my Canon G7X videos is which settings are best to use for vlogging, for low light, for background blur, and for video in general. And since I'm pivoting the focus of this channel onto making you a better travel vlogger through my experiences, today I'm going to walk you through the exact video camera settings I use on my Canon G7X. By the end of this video, you will know exactly how to shoot the prettiest and brightest footage possible on this awesome high-end point-and-shoot vlogging camera. Hi friends, I'm Alicia and this is MATV where I publish travel videos and provide video production instructions so you can level up your travel vlogging skills. Now, travel vlogs can be made up of a lot of different shots of a lot of different things. But here is the quintessential vlogging shot I think most people are trying to achieve at least in part of their vlogs. It's bright, my face is clear and in focus, and sort of just beautifully popping out from the background. I hate to think that some people are using the G7X but not getting its full value because they're not using the best settings, or maybe not understanding the settings at all. Because with the right settings at work, this is such a great camera and really a dream for travel vlogging. Now before we start, I have to say that my Canon G7X has been through the ringer and the lens has been slightly damaged ever since taking it to Burning Man in 2016. My husband did clean it using this technique where you drill into the lens and that did remove most of the dust in order to keep it going for a while, but overall the damage is still apparent. And I'm only telling you this because I want you to understand that you're looking at a slightly less than perfect G7X image, but it still looks awesome. Actually, the only reason I haven't replaced this camera or didn't replace it immediately is because I've been anxiously awaiting the release of the G7X Mark III and I think it will actually happen this week at CES. So if you're interested in that release, it's a great time to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell because we will talk a lot about the G7X Mark III when it finally comes into my life. Okay, so setting up your camera G7X for vlogging begins with turning your top camera dial to movie mode. It's important to know that all of these top settings will bring up a slightly different layout in this menu here. So if you feel like you're always seeing different things in the menu as you experiment with different settings, then this is why. I'm telling you because it trips me up way back in the day. Now there are a lot of menu settings you can access in here, but I'm going to show you how to set a few of the same things via the touch screen menu. Mostly because I think it's important for you to learn to access these shortcuts right here on this screen. First and foremost, take a look at your movie mode display screen. You can grab it just by tapping on the camera. On the upper left, find the movie mode options, take it out of standard, and set it to manual mode. And don't let this scare you. What this does is give you access to all of your manual options in the camera, such as aperture, shutter speed, and ISO or ISO. This is the good stuff. Then you'll go back into that queue and see the frame rate. It should be set to 24 frames per second in HD generally. It's actually 23.98 just to visually annoy you slightly. There are changes you can make to the frame rate to affect things like slow motion and motion blur, but to keep it simple for now, we will shoot at the industry standard cinematic frame rate of 24 frames per second. So those were sort of the basic camera settings. Now we'll go over what I would call the shot settings. We'll start with the shutter speed because although you may use different shutter speeds to gain different outcomes with photography, you're far less likely to switch it up for vlogging unless you're really looking for a special effect. So set your shutter speed to 1 50th of a second. The general rule in videography is to set your shutter speed at double the frame rate. This basically just ensures the right amount of motion blur in a video. Now our frame rate was 24 frames per second, but since 1 48th of a second isn't an option, we are sticking at 1 50th. Now the beauty of the G7X and the main thing that makes this camera the most professional point and shoot that Canon makes is the 1.8 aperture lens. Smaller numbered apertures are generally better because they're bigger and when the aperture is bigger, it lets in more light, which gives you much more creative control. It also provides a shallow depth of field, which is generally what creates this nice blurry background. Now of course, brightness and background blur aren't always attainable and they definitely can be overdone. If you're actually in super bright light, you may need to stop down the aperture because it's just too bright. Otherwise, you can use the built-in ND filter on the G7X to keep the larger 1.8 aperture in operation. You would do this if you were really going for that shallow depth of field. What's left is ISO, and this is where we actually get some control over the exposure. Generally, the smaller number, the better. However, setting a higher ISO is sometimes the solution you need when you are shooting in lower light. Although a higher ISO will make it brighter, the downside is it will give you some film grain after a certain point. So if you're, all of your other settings are correct and you need some more light but don't want the film grain, consider actually adding lights to the scene before you bring up the ISO too high. Now a lot of more amateur cameras have this exposure compensation dial. I would just forget that entirely. I never touch this dial because I prefer to control classic camera settings manually for the most professional approach and the absolute best results. And I promise it's not as hard as it sounds once you play around with it and get used to it. It's so important for travel vloggers to go out and practice getting good shots with your camera in all sorts of 
of different conditions before you are actually in these amazing places that you travel to. Trust me, I've done it before. You end up seeing this amazing shot and the lighting is weird and you just like, kind of lock up in your brain. So it's so important to practice it in advance and know what to do on the spot. And the main thing you have to know about these settings is kind of how they work on a sliding scale. So the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture all sort of affect each other. And when done properly, you'll find it remarkable how bright things can actually get with this camera. I swear it is brighter than my own eyes sometimes. This is footage from downtown San Diego during Comic-Con just shortly after I got the camera. And I think this is such a great example. It not only shows the low light capabilities, but it's the perfect example of a place you don't wanna bring a DSLR camera and a fancy lens when you're really just kind of like out to have a good time, which is what you're doing when you're traveling. So it's so convenient to actually have something with these low light capabilities that you can tuck into a purse and just take out for the evening. Another great thing to do is to head back into that menu under number four, IS settings. The Canon G7X has really great digital image stabilization that can sometimes make the scene appear like it's just floating. So be sure to set that to continuous. And then you can set it to either standard or high for maximum results. I actually didn't know there was a high until just recently. It's always been on standard and that has worked great, but I'd like to experiment with the high. One final setting to consider is focus. Although I do set the camera to manual to control things like aperture, for focus, I do keep it set on autofocus, generally on face tracking. The little icon looks like this. This way it will find my face wherever I go and keep it in focus. And if I'm not filming a face, I can simply use the touch screen to select what I would like the camera to focus on. You can also use the touch screen to do this really cool thing called a rack focus. So first you would tap on this, then you would tap on that. Rack focus done. One really cool thing you can do to help the camera find your face and not some stranger in the crowds is to program your face into the camera. So you'll go into the menu under number two, face ID settings. Make sure it is set to on, then select add to registry. We'll select add new face. And since my face is already programmed into this camera, we're going to add this little person who has become really the next most popular face around here. Although not making an appearance today, sorry. So anyway, that little programming should help the camera find focus not only on faces, but on its favorite faces. And there you have it. I hope this information was helpful for you to get the most out of your G7X or find some more reasons to buy one if you don't have one yet. Get that camera. It will change your life. Your filmmaking life, at least. Right now, the G7X Mark II is about to be at its lowest price ever with the new one coming out. And although I'm sure the Mark III will have some great features, I really wouldn't hesitate to buy the Mark II again because it's a really great camera for vlogging and getting all sorts of gorgeous shots and just leveling up your videography completely. I'll add my Amazon link to this camera in the description below. And I greatly appreciate if you do make a purchase. It helps to support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything extra. It's a great way to get your gear because you get to learn about it first from me. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful and if you have any additional questions about the Canon G7X. If you'd like to learn more about this awesome camera, do check out the other videos I made discussing some more of its features and also some issues you can learn to tackle, such as recording external audio. And like I said, subscribe to AMA TV now for more videos coming soon about the Canon G7X Mark III and also other tutorials about how to become a better travel vlogger. Also join me in the Facebook group I created for awesome people like you. It's called Travel Film Friends and it's a place for us constantly improving travel filmmakers to discuss this exciting art form. I'll put that link below as well. I'm Alicia and I will see you all next time. Bye!